fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Toto lounged in the shadows outside the Last Chance Cafe. <clears throat> Through the open window, he could see and hear everything that was going on inside. But at the moment, he was watching two men across the street. They were talking earnestly, and finally, the larger of the two turned on his heel and walked across the street to the cafe. Tonto watched him as he pushed his way through the crowd of cattlemen to the bar. Howdy, Jake. Got a fine crowd here tonight. Sure, Saturday. What do you have? Oh, the usual. Coming up. Is there anybody here I should talk to, Jake? Well, I told you before, Masters. You won't find a single spread in the county for sale. Well, that's too bad. I'd sort of like to settle down here. Well, you don't have to be a rancher to make money in the cattle business. Well, that's true enough. Uh, you say you've been a cattle buyer in your time. Why don't you open up an office here? Not a bad idea. <laughs> don't matter much to me what I do. Rancher, cattle buyer, lawman, I've been all of them. Lawman? Yeah, that's right. Worked for Wild Bill in Deadwood. Well, hey, don't say. Well, by the way, you'll be electing a new sheriff next month, won't you? Well, there'll be an election, but I don't figure there'll be any change. John Bennett's been the sheriff for a long time. So I hear. Let's hope you never have need of a better one. Uh, What's that? Uh, No offense. I guess as long as the county stays peaceful, Bennett can handle the job. At that moment, the doors of the cafe swung open and a stranger staggered in. His guns were slung low. There was a wild glare in his eyes. His mouth was ugly. Get out of the way! Hey, Coach Mike! I Get should have out. touched wood. This looks like a tough customer. Yeah. yeah. All right, barkeep. What are you waiting for? Set up drinks for the house. You've had enough to drink. Hey, you walking with me? I told you to set them up. Let's see the color of your money, stranger. Oh, so you don't think I'll pay, eh? I didn't say that. Well, this is how I'll pay. With these guns. Rustle those drinks, and if you don't move fast... I'll shoot up the joint. Hold your fire, mister. Yeah, hold it. Oh. Ben Masters swung hard. His fist landed squarely on the gunman's chin. He dropped to the floor, and Ben picked up his guns. Good work, Masters. You sure pack a wallop. Uh, cinch to handle his kind. Pour some water on him. We'll march him down to the jail. Let him sleep it off. Sheriff can give him back his guns when he sends him on his way in the morning. The gunman was taken to the jail. 
The turnkey locked him up, and Ben Masters returned to the cafe to be lionized by the ranchers and cowboys. Tonto listened to his talk about Wild Bill and Deadwood for some time before he mounted Scout and rode out of town to the Lone Ranger's camp. He told the masked man everything he had seen and heard. So this would-be bad man was talking with Ben Masters only a few minutes before he threatened to shoot up the cafe. That's right. You believe that Masters arranged the whole affair? Ah. Uh, but why? Well, Tonto think him want be sheriff. Really? Ah. Uh, one rancher say it good thing for county to have sheriff like Masters. Masters say maybe him run, him laugh, but him mean it. He wouldn't have much chance against John Bennett. Bennett has a fine record. Oh, no, him change, Kimasabi. Change? Him plenty old now. They're talking town that him not see well. Me watch him. That right. Their shadow come over eyes. Me know. You know what, Tonto? Bennett go blind. Blind? You mean it? Ah, their shadow. Well, if his sight isn't what it used to be... Perhaps he won't even run for sheriff. Well, him run. He shouldn't if what you say is true. Perhaps Master should be elected in his place. No, Master's not good man. You don't like the trick he played tonight. Well, I'll admit that it oh, wasn't... Oh, that not all. Tonto, remember him. From Deadwood? No, him never there. Him not work for Wild Bill. You're sure? Ah, you see him. You remember him from other place like Tonto. Where? From Border Town. Him call himself Ben Farrow there. One of El Diablo's men. That right. Of course, it was several years ago. He might have turned over a new leaf. It not good him be sheriff. No, we'll do our best to prevent it, Kimosabe. Wearing a disguise, the Lone Ranger spent a great deal of time in town during the next week. He was there when Ben Masters publicly announced his candidacy for sheriff. He listened to the talk, and he watched John Bennett closely. At the end of the week, he had made a decision. You're absolutely right about the old Sheriff Tonto. He doesn't see well. People don't talk about it because they don't want to hurt his feelings. They like him. But they'll vote against him when it comes to the election. Not bad. However, if Bennett were to withdraw in favor of someone who was better qualified, that man could win. After all, Masters is a stranger. The ranchers would rather vote for someone they knew... And what we do? Persuade Bennett to withdraw. How, Kimasabi? Prove to him he has no right to be sheriff. We're going to take him prisoner. Every night at dusk, the sheriff rode from his office to his ranch, which was only three miles outside of town. His horse knew the way, and he usually let him have his head. But on Saturday night, as he was passing a clump of trees, two men rode out on the trail in front of him. Oh, who there? Oh, oh, scout, silly big fella. Uh, hello there. Hello, Sheriff. It's a little dark. I can't quite make out who you are. Look closer. It's a mask. You're wearing a mask. Yes, and this is a gun. You're covered. Is this a holdup? You might call it that. Get his guns, fellow. Uh, I have no money. We're not interested in money. You're coming with us, Sheriff. What for? We can talk better at our camp. I'll lead your horse. Come on, sir. Come up, scout. Half an hour later, the sheriff was sitting beside the Lone Ranger's campfire. Why have you brought me here? Believe it or not, sheriff, because we're your friends. <laughs> friends? Yes. We don't happen to be outlaws. But if we were... If we'd meant to rob you or kill you or take you prisoner and hold you for ransom, we wouldn't have had any trouble, would we? You have taken me prisoner. Only so we could have a talk with you. What about? You. I rode straight toward you, Sheriff, and you didn't see my mask until I was only a few feet away. It, it was dark. It's dark most of the time now, isn't it, Sheriff? Uh, how do you know that? The whole county knows it. You haven't fooled anyone. They know? Everyone. Hmm. Well, what about it? Just this. You have no right to run for sheriff again. Oh, that's my business. It isn't safe for you or the people you're paid to protect. It's better for them to have someone like me than a fly-by-night like Masters. Yes, I agree. They deserve more of a choice. 
It's your duty to withdraw in favor of someone who's both competent and trustworthy. Uh, how about it, Sheriff? Um, your horse, your Indian friend, Tonto. You're the Lone Ranger, aren't you? Yes. Well, what's your answer? I'd like to explain. Go right ahead. I was the first man to settle in the county. I've been sheriff here for a long time. And you've been a good sheriff. All the time Bill was growing up, learning to ride and to shoot. I taught him well because I always thought he'd take my place. Your son? Yeah. Everybody in the county figured he'd be the next sheriff. But three years ago, they made the big strike in Leadville. All that talk of millions went to his head. He left. You're... You're hanging on because you hope that he'll come back. He promised. Three years, though, it's a long time. Too long. It may not be. What? Bill Bennett is in Leadville. Isn't that right? Well, you've met him? I've heard of him. There was a mine cave-in on Carbonate Hill three years ago. Bill went in after one of the miners who was trapped. Saved his life at the risk of his own... He's a good boy. He has courage. There's no doubt of that. He'd make a good sheriff. I think so, too. But I haven't had a word from him. He's through with us. Probably struck it rich. There might be another reason for not writing. You, you don't mean that he's dead? No, but if he's one of the thousands in Leadville who didn't strike it rich, his pride might keep him from writing or coming back. Oh, I wish it... Oh, but there's no sense to that. You're, you're right. I'd better face the facts. Bob Hanlon would be a good sheriff. I'll have a talk with him. Why don't you nominate your son in your place, Sheriff? Bill? Why, what's the good? Uh, Do it. Tell folks that he's coming home? Yes. You... You'll go after him? We'll start tonight. But Leadville's a long way. There's a month before the election. And even if you find him, he might refuse to come back. I have an argument that will convince him. What? All you have to do is see that he gets elected. Why, Bill, everybody'd vote for him. We'll ride back to your ranch with you, then be on our way. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the north, past the Spanish peaks and onto Pueblo, on along the banks of the river that boils. They circled Pike's Peak, urged their mounts up and through Ute Pass, steadied them on the perilous descent to South Park. Across that great upland valley, they raced to the banks of the Arkansas, then upstream to California Gulch, and at last they saw the glare of the smelters in Leadville, beneath the towering might of the Continental Divide. Leadville was at the height of its boom, a town of 25,000, but only the main streets were lighted. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through pitch black alleys until they reached the rear of the Marshal's office. They dismounted and Tonto crept close to the back window. They're men with Marshal now. We'll wait until he's alone. Fifteen minutes later, Tonto raised his hand. The Lone Ranger walked to the door and opened it. Who's it? The mask man. Easy, Marshal. What? You and Tonto. Well, welcome to Leadville. Hey, gullies, how long's it been? Two years anyway since you caught those road agents for me. What brings you here? You know a young fellow named Bill Bennett? Bennett? Sure I do. Where is he? Still in town? I think so. Any idea where he lives or works? Nope. Six months ago, I could have told you exactly where to find him. He was right next door. But, but the jail is next door. That's right. Bill Bennett was behind those bars. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue. For a moment after the marshal announced that Bill Bennett had been in jail, the Lone Ranger said nothing. Then he turned to Tonto. Well, it looks as though we made our trip for nothing, Tonto. Uh. Why? What'd you want with Bill? We wanted to persuade him to go home and take over his father's job as sheriff. An ex-convict isn't qualified. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bill was in jail, all right, but he shouldn't have been. It was all a mistake. He was framed for that bank robbery. Oh, suppose you tell us about it. Sure. Tabor's bank was broke into. There weren't any clues at all. But the next day, I got a letter, anonymous, telling me to search Bill Bennett's cabin, and I'd find the missing cash. Well, we did find some of it stuck in his mattress. He didn't have any alibi for the night before, so he was convicted. That's why I locked him up. But how was he cleared? It was an hombre shot in a gunfight a week later. And just before he died, he confessed he'd taken part in the robbery. There was two others who worked with him, but Bill wasn't one of them. They'd planted the cash in his mattress so that he'd get blamed. Why did they pick on him? Oh, uh, one of the other crooks, uh, Macklin, had a grudge against him. And did you catch Macklin and his partner? No, oh, they were long gone when this hombre got shot up and told us who they were. But Bill was freed right away? Right away. Then we still want to find him. Well, that's easy enough, only... Oh, only what? Well, the job is sheriff. He's sour on the law, mister. He's sour on the world. Oh, it'd be a fine thing if you could persuade him to go home, but <laughs> I don't think you can. I'll try, Marshal. All right. You and Tonto wait right here. I'll send one of my men out to locate him. You want him brought in? No. We'll find him for you. The Paradise Cafe was in the dark side street known as Cutthroat Alley. It was early in the evening for the Paradise, and outside of the dozing bartender, Bill Bennett and Tex Cleary were the only customers. So you're pulling stakes, Bill. What are you going to do, go home? No. Why not? I can't. I couldn't face him back home. I'm going to Frisco and try my luck as a sailor. You're loco. You're a cattleman. Even if you don't go home, there's plenty of other places where you can still ride a horse and... Hey. The door opened and the Lone Ranger walked into the cafe. A mask man. Don't go for your gun. Oh, not me. You picked the wrong spot for a holdup, mister. You're Bill Bennett, aren't you? And if I am? You're coming with me. Yeah? Did Macklin send you after me? No, your father did. That's a likely story. I have a horse for you outside. We're starting back for Sunset County tonight. I'm never going back to Sunset County. You promised you would. Yeah. When I thought I'd come back rich, you know... What do you mean my paw sent you here? It's the truth. We're friends. My paw don't have outlaws for friends. We won't argue about it. But you're going to keep your promise. And if I refuse? You won't. Your father needs you. He wants to see you. And if you don't go back there soon, we'll be too late. Too late? Your paw, Bill. Yeah. All right, mister, you win. Good. Let's go. On the morning of election day, the ranchers and cowboys of Sunset County swarmed into the county seat, and Ben Masters watched them from his hotel room. Pecos Mike was with him. You haven't got a chance, Ben. Yeah, you're wrong. I had a big conference with Bennett and the election commission last night. I protested against young Bennett running when he wasn't even in the county. The old man gave his word that he'd be here by 8 o'clock tonight to be sworn in if he was elected. Well, that's all I wanted, to make the old man set a time limit for his showing up. And what happens if he doesn't show? Well, I get the election by default. That's what the commission decided. <laughs> he can't get here. You know that. I know that. But the rest of the county doesn't. Not yet. <laughs> at 7.30 that evening, John Bennett was slumped behind his desk in the room he used as an office at the ranch. The door opened and his foreman entered. Good news. He's winning. It's a landslide. What's the difference how many votes he gets? He isn't here. There's still time. Half an hour. And all along, I've been so sure the mask man would do what he said. Well, now I've got it straight. He didn't have a chance of persuading Bill to come back. What does being sheriff of Sunset County mean to a man who can make millions? Well, there's nothing left to do but... Oh, wait. Someone just rode up. Judge Carter looking for Bill. Oh, no, there are three men. Uh, who is it? I can't see. They're coming inside. Joe, who? It's the mask man and an Indian and Bill. What? Howdy. Welcome, Bill. Howdy, Joe. 
Where's Paul? Right here, son, right here. Welcome home. Paul, there's nothing wrong with you at all. Never felt better, but we haven't got much time. It was a trick. The masked man lied to me. Lied to you? Oh, no, son. No, this is the Lone Ranger. He wouldn't do a thing like that. I guessed who he was on the way here. All the same, he lied. Ask him. No, Bill. I said your father wanted to see you, and that if you didn't return home soon, it would be too late. Well, that was true, son. I'm losing my sight. It would be too late for him to see you. Well, I... Oh, Paul, I'm sorry. You know that. It may not be so bad. Later on, Doc says maybe an operation. What difference does it make, though? You're back, and I can use your eyes. I can't stay here. Why not? Haven't you... Mister, haven't you told him? No, not yet. How's the election going? He's winning easy. Yes, but he has to be in town by 8 o'clock or it goes to Masters by default. Son, you're going to be the next sheriff of Sunset County. Sheriff? No. What have you done? What are you talking about? Your father decided that because of his eyes, he couldn't run again. More than anything in this world, he wanted you to succeed him. So he nominated you in his place. Now you've been elected. Why don't you tell him why I can't be sheriff? Why do you make me do it? There's no reason, Bill. I've been in jail, Paul. Son. You were clear to the charge against you? And you think I'd swear to uphold the law after what the law did to me? That I'd lock men up like I was locked up, innocent, framed? Bill, what you went through should make you a better lawman. After all, the sheriff's job is to protect the innocent just as much as to punish the guilty. You'll be fair and just. That isn't true, the man who'll be sheriff if you refuse the job. You're needed, Bill. This may be the first time anyone has ever appealed to your sense of duty. Do you have one? Your father, your friends are counting on you. Are you going to let them down? Paul, you... The others... You want me? The masked man said it. More than anything in the world. All right, I'm game. Then what are we waiting for? Get my horse saddle, Joe. We've got to make it fast. All right. But Pecos Mike had witnessed Bill's arrival, and as the little party from the ranch were passing the woods on their way to town, a rifle shot rang out from the top of the rise to the left of the trail. Another shot kicked up the dust in front of Silver, and the Moon Ranger swung the great horse into the shelter of the trees. The others followed him. So, Masters, he's going in for gunplay. It looks like it. I wonder how many men are up there. With a rifle, one can stop us from getting by. Not for long. It's getting dark. By the time it's dark, it'll be after eight. Whoever it is is only interested in stopping Bill. A quick, Bill. I want your coat and your hat. Right. I'll ride your horse. Easy, steady, big fella. What are you going to do? I'll show you. Hurry. A moment later, the Lone Ranger, wearing Bill's coat and with his hat pulled down over his eyes, was mounted on Bill's horse. The others watched as he rode out of the woods and started for town at a dead run. Get up! Get up there! Get up! Whoa. This is suicide. Uh, Tonto, not think so. I think I know what he's up to, but it's taken an awful chance. As they watched, a shot rang out, and the Lone Ranger dropped from the saddle and lay still at the side of the trail. He's been hit. No. He's fallen. We got to get out there and help him. Oh, you wait. You hear that? Gunman think him shoot Bill. And now him right way. The coast is clear. Get him up, Scout. Get up, get up, get up. The Lone Ranger was still lying flat on the ground as they rode up. Oh, Scout, oh, 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 oh. But he sprang to his feet as he heard their voices. It's all right, Toto. Get your horse, Bill. Uh, Toto, get him. Come, Scout. Come, fella. You faked it. Here's your coat, Bill. Easy, boy. Ah, snakes. It sure looked like the real thing. I'd hate to take a fall like that. I don't make a habit of it. Did you get a look at the man who shot at you? No, he was too far away and well hidden by the ridge. But I caught a glimpse of his horse as he rode away. It was a Palomino. Hey, Pecos Mike, Ben Masters' partner. He's the only one around here who rides a Palomino. He was heading for town. To see Ben sworn in as sheriff. We can still stop that. Your horse, Bill. Thanks. Easy, Easy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pine torches were flaring in the gathering dusk in front of the courthouse. Judge Carter, standing on the steps, consulted his watch as Ben Masters pushed his way through the crowd. Well, it's 8 o'clock, Judge, no matter what your watch says. It's time to announce the results. Very well. Listen to the results of the election, men. Bill Bennett, 2,040 votes. Ben Masters, 108. <laughs> But Bill isn't here. That means I'm the new sheriff. 
When are you going to swear me in, Judge? I have no intention of swearing you in. The election committee decided that if Bill wasn't here by 8 o'clock, I was to be declared the winner. I don't care what the committee decided. You think there's still a chance of his showing up? Well, you're wrong. I happen to know that Bill is still in Leadville. What's more, he's in jail. That's a lie. What? What? You... It's Bill. Here he is now. Well, let him through. Three cheers for the new sheriff. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Let go of my arm. Am I the new sheriff, Judge? You will be as soon as I swear you in. I'll make it fast. I'm all set to make my first arrest. <clears throat> do you swear to uphold the laws of this county and to discharge the duties of sheriff in the fear of God and the best interests of your fellow citizens? I do. You're a sheriff. Good. And you're under arrest, Ben Macklin. My name is Mass. You've probably had a lot of names in your time, but you're under arrest. And you'll be returned to Leadville to stand trial for the robbery of Tabor's Bank. Now, if I could only lay my hands on your sidekick, Pecos, everything would be... I think I have him here, Sheriff. Let the masked man through there, man. Here, Sheriff. This is the man who shot at us. He was trying to get away on the Palomino. Is this Pecos? He sure is, mister. You'll go to jail with Ben, Pecos. Then I'll say goodbye and the best of luck, Bill. Thanks, mister. Wait a minute, Dick. I don't get this. You arrest two men, and then you let a masked man walk away, an outlaw. <laughs> you want me to arrest him, too? Well, shouldn't you? As long as I'm sheriff, Judge, there'll never be a man arrested in this county unless I have absolute proof of his guilt. All I can charge the masked man with is loyalty to his friends, courage in the face of danger, and a great love for his country. Well, now, Men, I want you to know that I'll try to be a good sheriff. And if I succeed, it'll be because of his example. The example of the man they call the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.